Proxmox provides a few different enterprise-level open source applications, one of which is the Proxmox Virtual Environment, which is described as a complete server management platform for enterprise virtualization. In other words, a virtual machine. For those unfamiliar with what a virtual machine is, it's basically a software-based computer that mimics a physical computer's functionality. A virtual computer inside your computer, allowing the software inside of the virtual machine to run independently from the host computer's operating system. There are a number of reasons why you might want this, including running multiple operating systems, testing applications that are only compatible with certain operating systems, running legacy software that's no longer supported on newer hardware, and more. Proxmox VE is a popular choice for virtual machines that has been successfully installed on the vault with both AMI and Coreboot firmware. Even though it can be installed on every current Protect Lee vault model, we recommend our higher-end models, such as the VP series or our six-port vaults with VTD support for a smoother experience. We'll talk more about VTD support later on in the video, and we'll also include a link to our compatibility chart in the video description for further information. Here's how you would go about installing Proxmox on the vault. First, you'll need to obtain the installation image and uncompress it. The installation image can be obtained from proxmox.com by navigating to their downloads page and clicking the download button, link in the description below. Select the Proxmox VE ISO installer to download the ISO image and save it to your PC. The easiest way to transfer the installation image to a USB drive is by using software called Rufus on Windows or Belena Etcher on Mac OS. You can watch our video on how to create a bootable USB drive for more detailed instructions on that. We'll leave a link to that in the description below as well. Now that you have your installation USB formatted, insert the USB installation drive into a USB port in the vault. Connect an ethernet cable from one of the NIC ports on your vault to your modem or another device handing out a DHCP address on your network. Vaults with AMI firmware come with virtualization already enabled. But if the BIOS settings have been altered and you want to double check, you can access your BIOS settings by holding the delete key while the vault is booting up and locating an option labeled virtualization technology, VMX, or something similar and enabling it. Make sure to save and exit when this is done by pressing the F4 key. On a vault with Core Boot, Protect Lee's open source firmware solution, virtualization is enabled by default and there's no menu option to toggle it on and off. For more information on Coreboot, check out the link in the video description. While powering up the vault, press the F11 key and verify that it boots to the BIOS boot options screen. Select the USB drive to boot from. Verify the vault boots to the Proxmox VE welcome page. Select Install Proxmox VE. You can select Graphical Install in most cases. And verify it begins the installation process. Follow the on-screen installation prompts to accept the EULA and install Proxmox VE. Select the target disk. This will typically be one of, if not the largest, solid state drive in your vault. Keep in mind that anything currently written to the disk will be erased during this process, so make sure you've selected the correct disk you would like to install Proxmox onto. Select the country, time zone, and keyboard layout. Set the password and email. Be sure to remember this password for later, as it will be used to access Proxmox after installation is complete. Verify an IP address is received on whichever network port is being utilized. If one is not automatically provided, try rebooting and attempt again. Otherwise, manually fill out your IP address, gateway, and DNS server information to correlate with your local network. You can do this by logging into your router's admin interface and checking the range of the IP addresses used for DHCP. Choose an address outside of this range that is not already being used by another device on the network to avoid conflicts. To find your network's gateway, check your router's admin interface or use the default gateway listed on a connected device. For DNS servers, you can use your own internal DNS server if you have one configured, or you can use a public DNS server like Cloudflare's 1.1.1.1. Input these values accurately to ensure a stable network connection for Proxmox. 
This part can be a little confusing, so we'll leave some additional information on this in the video description. Accept and begin the installation. Verify the installation completes and reboots to the login prompt. Note the IP address of the unit. Login with user root and the password entered during installation. Once Proxmox VE is installed, you can browse to the GUI via the IP address of the network port. Open up a web browser of your choice on a computer that is on the same network connection as your Protectly Vault. Browse to the IP address, including the port number, displayed in the login screen. Verify the login prompt is displayed. Login as root with the password entered during installation. When accessing the web interface, you may receive a warning stating you do not have a valid subscription. Assuming you're using Proxmox for home or private use, you can go ahead and click OK. If you get stuck at this page, try clicking your browser's refresh button. Verify the home page is displayed. At this point, Proxmox VE has been successfully installed on the vault. There's documentation available on their website for configuration and management of Proxmox, which we'll leave a link to in the video description. Now that Proxmox has been installed, you can install virtual machines directly to it. We have guides on how to install OpenSense, Windows, Ubuntu, and many other operating systems in our knowledge base, which we'll leave a link to below. After basic installation, hardware is seen as virtual hardware and can be used by all of the VMs and the host in a system. Proxmox provides PCI pass-through, which enables direct access via the PCI Express bus to physical devices such as a network port or storage. The advantage of PCI pass-through is lower latency and higher performance. However, once a device is passed through a VM, it can't be used by other VMs or the host in the system. PCI pass-through allows you to directly use a vault's physical components with virtual machines running on Proxmox. This would let you accomplish tasks like using the physical network interface directly on an OpenSense virtual machine, instead of utilizing a virtualized network interface. Note that IOMMU, or an Input-Output Memory Management Unit, must be enabled for PCI pass-through to work. If you update the OS, IOMMU will most likely become disabled, meaning you'll need to reconfigure and enable IOMMU via the command line. We'll leave a link to instructions on how to configure PCI pass-through and IOMMU in the video description below. Note that PCI pass-through is only compatible with platforms that support VTD or virtualization technology for directed input-output. Therefore, it's not compatible with the FW2B, FW4B, or FW4C vault models. Further information and potential use cases can be found on our Utilizing PCI Pass-Through Knowledge Base article, which we'll leave a link to below. If you run into any issues during this process, feel free to leave a comment below and we'll try to help out. If you like the video, be sure to leave it a like, subscribe to see more content like this, and thanks for watching.